What if you decided to like and subscribe before watching the video? No? Okay, I guess I'll just get right into it. In this video, I'm ranking the relevant characters in Marvel's What If Season 2 in terms of strength and power. The bottom tier is for characters around regular human strength. Hammer is a master of Taekwondo, Jiu Jitsu, Muay Thai, and learned prison fighting techniques. Look out. Comandante Gonzalo was a tough as nails Spanish conquistador that still tried to attack Kahori after being trampled. 1602 Nick Fury KO'd one of Thor's royal guards. Maria Hill has the advantage of having modern tech, like guns, so she shoots the characters below. The elite human tier have the training, skill, or strength to make them more than a match for regular humans. Royal Yellow Jackets have the ability to shrink like Ant-Man, but they were pretty much fodder to the main cast. Topaz was the Grand Master's muscle, and her weapon has the ability to melt pretty much anyone. She also has throwable tasers she can use to stun people into submission. Widows are highly trained assassins and can make Natasha struggle when ganging up on her. A Jarvis bot was capable of taking down Maria Hill, breaking her leg. They easily smashed through bulletproof glass, hired muscle with a sledgehammer couldn't. Howard the Duck has a vast arsenal of alien tech and managed to shoot yon gun out of his hand. The superhuman tiers for characters that have strength, skill, and abilities that seem beyond human capabilities. Sir Hogan in his human form actually managed to drive Captain America back. Hela with her powers stripped was still a force to be reckoned with, taking out many of Wenwu's men. Melina got the advantage over Natasha in a fight, though Natasha was tired and hurt from her fight with the Widows. Natasha taking on and defeating all of her fellow Widows is more impressive than anything Melina did, and Natasha ended up beating Melina in the end which is why she goes above her foster mother. Adarax and the others that went into the Forbidden Lake were gifted with super speed and telekinesis. Yon Rog has alien tech and should have his gravitational weapons he had in Captain Marvel. Dr. Wendy Lawson has the same tech and thought she could hold down the celestial powered Peter Quill with it. Hank Pym as Ant Man has all the standard powers of Ant Man. 1602 Scott Lang has the same powers, but he also has a sword. He clearly did worse than the others against the Royal Yellow Jackets, which is why I put him a tier below his compatriots. The Super Soldier tier, as its name suggests, is for characters on the same level as the Super Soldier. Red Skull was able to temporarily give 1602 Bucky trouble. I put the Winter Soldier above 1602 Bucky because the Winter Soldier has modern weaponry like grenade launchers and sniper rifles, while Bucky has arrows. Roger's Hood took Red Skull out from behind and gave Happy Hulk Hogan some trouble. Groot does Groot things. One version of Korg took a page from Hulk's book, smashing yon Rog as if he were Loki, and another version of him took out a massive chariot with a punch. The low superhero tiers for characters beyond the super soldier realm. Snuffy was the champion of Sakaar, which should scale him above Korg, who is not the champion. There was talk of Ted being a past champion of Sakaar based off the tower, but I now think that's Snuffy. Gamora is extremely strong, though in terms of brute strength, she's weaker than Korg. She likely beats him out in speed and skill, but what really puts her here is her gear. She was able to one-shot Snuffy with one of her weapons. Nebula would normally be below Gamora, but after acquiring Yandu's arrow, I believe she surpassed her sister. Wenwu and Hela after training at Talo could both beat up standard as guardians. They were even able to give Odin a run for his money. Hela did most of the upfront fighting, while Wenwu was more of the support, which is why I put Hela higher. Jai was Hela's master and said her training was still far from complete, so she should still be above her apprentice at that time. King T'Chaka is the Black Panther as the strength of a super soldier, but is practically invulnerable due to his vibranium suit. An alternate version of Wenwu seemed to be fighting on par with Killmonger, so I do think Black Panther and Wenwu should be in the same tier. The Hydra Stomper is essentially a cross between Iron Man and the Winter Soldier. It has the durability to tank Quinjet fire and the firepower to destroy the Red Room. Captain Peggy Carter has the superpower of plot armor on her side, because she's unreasonably strong for a super soldier. She seemingly moved fast enough to intercept the Hydra Stomper's bullets, tanks being flown through multiple building floors better than Spider-Man did against Goblin, flipped a car that got thrown at her, got smashed by another one and took no damage, and got hit by dozens of Widow Bites before going down, with just a single one being enough to KO a Widow, and an alternate Widow Bite even stunned Happy Hulk Hogan. It was implied she defeated Loki with his Mind Scepter with the help of Black Widow, something Steve had no chance of doing. She seemingly beat the Hydra Stomper by targeting its weak point, though that was revealed to be part of the plan. 
Carter seemed to have the edge in their final fight before deciding she didn't want to fight anymore. So I put her above the Hydra Stomper, though it's a really close fight. She did have to run and jump ship in their first encounter, so the Hydra Stomper would likely beat her in certain scenarios. Peggy did some crazy stuff in the final episode, but at the start of that episode, Strange gave her a power-up, and it's never implied she lost it. So I'm just going to assume she kept it for the rest of the episode so I don't pull my hair out. The mid-superhero tier is for characters around the strength of the Incredible Hulk. The Destroyer is made of extremely durable Asgardian metal and was unfazed by Peggy's assault. It can shoot a very destructive energy beam from its face that was forcing Captain Carter back. Goliath can grow to immense sizes and nobody in the tier below has the strength to put him down. Hammer and the Hulkbuster was able to give Happy Hulk Hogan a good fight and got the edge over him at some points. Tony built a suit similar to the Hulkbuster on Sakaar, and I have faith Tony would be able to best his wannabe, despite his supposed Taekwondo skills. It's also worth mentioning Tony was confident he could defeat Snuffy in his Mark 7 suit, but failed due to it not working. Happy Hulk Hogan could smash through countless Jarvis bots and ended up ripping the Hulkbuster apart. He fought off Iron Man, Captain America, Black Widow, and Hawkeye all teaming up on him. Sir Hogan was a more competent fighter than Happy, so I assume Sir Hulk Hogan would be a better fighter than his more Happy counterpart. He gave the Hulk a good fight, but at the end of the day, there's no out hulking the Hulk, which is why the Hulk is at the top of this tier. The high superhero tier is where we start to get into characters with godly power. Peter Quill, after having his celestial powers activated, was said to have an entire nuclear arsenal coursing through his veins. Apparently at the rate he was going, the planet wouldn't last a day, and if they didn't take Peter out soon, the entire eastern seaboard wouldn't have been inhabitable for half a century. It was said nobody on Earth alone could stop him, and Peter backed that up by defeating Ant-Man, Black Panther, Winter Soldier, and Goliath. But Thor isn't from Earth, and he came in and one-shot Peter with his lightning, though that was a surprise attack. It was implied Peter was their best chance at stopping Ego, so that could be used to argue that at his best, he would be more powerful than Thor. After absorbing one of Ego's seeds, he definitely surpassed the Asgardian, and even his own father, obliterating his corporeal form. It's unclear if this power-up is temporary or not, so I didn't rank him based off of it. 1602 Thor had a Vibranium Blade and had the edge over Captain Carter, but I believe Thor with Mjolnir would be superior. Hela with Mjolnir before having her power stripped should be above Thor, as she had the powers of the Goddess of Death along with the godly weapon. Not to mention every time we've seen Hela fight Thor, she's gotten the better of him. The Team Buster tears for characters that take an entire team of powerful heroes to defeat. Odin was able to easily stop and destroy Mjolnir and then stripped Hela's powers away from her, so he should go a tier above her. Gungnir increases his firepower and using this weapon made for a king, he defeated Hela and Wenwu in a tough battle. Zombie Wanda was able to give Kahori and Peggy trouble. 1602 Scarlet Witch was able to pull people from other universes and was powerful enough to temporarily hold off Thor while simultaneously trying to stop a tear in the fabric of space and time from killing them all. Ego and his human avatar were strong enough to overpower Thor and the other protectors of Earth. He can create his own army and literally spawned a mountain. The Infinity Stone tier is for characters with the power of an Infinity Stone. A version of Ronan was able to kill Thanos, and I'm just going to assume this is with the Power Stone because I have no idea how Ronan could have pulled that off without it. Hell, after learning Mercy and getting her powers back, became so powerful she could casually stomp Odin. It's implied she stopped Thanos as well. Surtur at full size forced Odin to use the Tesseract, and even then Asgard and Odin still ended up getting obliterated. Kahori got her powers from the Space Stone, gaining the power of super speed, telekinesis, and teleportation portals. Initially she wasn't that powerful, even being overcome by cannons. But after fully mastering her powers, she was able to defeat Zombie Wanda and Killmonger with the Infinity Stone. She even gave Supreme Strange some trouble. The Universal tier is for characters with the power to destroy the universe. Killmonger has the Infinity Stone, so this must mean he overcame Dr. Zola in their struggle. He snapped away Thanos with the full Infinity Gauntlet, though it was a surprise attack. Gahori did beat him, but she did so by teleporting him out of his suit, so I don't think she's actually more powerful than him with all the stones. Her ability is just a perfect counter for him. Captain Carter with the Infinity Stone suit should be superior to Killmonger due to her just being superior to him in general. Strange says he's defeated that armor once before, and Peggy said not with her in it. So this could imply she thinks she's more of a threat than Infinity Ultron. Or maybe she just knows she has plot armor backing her. This isn't that far-fetched, as it looks like Strange captured another version of Infinity Ultron. But this time it would have had to been on his own. So it's likely Strange surpassed Ultron. Captain Carter and Kahori put up a valiant fight against Supreme Strange but Strange was clearly their superior. 
After Peggy and Kahori were given gear from the charitable bystanders, they started to take the advantage over the sorcerer. This is when Strange led his inner monster out and became even more powerful. He arguably would have won if Strange's good side didn't come out and stop him. That's the end of the list. But what if Season 3 has already been announced, so expect another list when that comes out. You can also expect much, much more from me. I'm a man of many tier lists, and will continue to work hard to pump them out. Please show me your love by subscribing, liking, and leaving a comment. There are many different alternate realities, and you don't know if this is one with me waiting outside your door. So for your own benefit, do it. I may not be able to contain the monster in me like Strange did.